And I'm not on the screen. I want to welcome everybody. Give me one second. I'll get me back on. And here I am. <laughs> Bartos, I want to welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live. Today we are joined by a very special guest, writer-director Bartos M. Kowalski. Bartos has written and directed Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight, Part 1 and 2, currently available in, on Netflix. So, Bartos, thank you so much for being our guest today. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome, everybody. And just to note, Bartos is joining us all the way from Poland. So we want to thank him. Uh, it's like currently nine o'clock over there. So let's get right to it, Bartos. Now, uh, like I said, you were you wrote, directed Nobody Sleeps in the Woods tonight, parts one and two. Let's start with the first one. The first one uses the backdrop of a camp for teenagers that are addicted to technology. What made you choose that theme that is very relevant today as opposed to the traditional camp counselor slasher flicks that we have seen in the past? Well, you know, there's it is it is relevant, but there was never like this big master plan of like a social commentary behind it basically uh, to be 100 percent honest with you i mean i really wanted to find like a simple but an original way to get rid of the technology uh, the cell phones because i mean obviously it's so anticlimactic nowadays when you get a group of people that are supposed to be in danger out in the middle of nowhere and basically we live in the world where you have reception everywhere and yeah. it just takes five clicks to get some help so so basically yeah like i said there was never there was never supposed to be this this major social commentary behind it it was more of a starting point of how to get rid of the technology in a inventive way uh, as opposed to having the kids uh, having no signal in the middle of a forest Makes perfect sense. Now, there are two killers in both movies. Uh, again, going back to the first one, tell us how you came up with the story of the brothers, the meteor, their transformation. Uh, it was very creative. What was your inspiration behind that? Well, you know, the, the very uh, original inspiration came from the Polish politics, which, uh, yeah, this, it, it, this is something that only Polish people could actually figure out because uh, a couple of years ago, well, more like 10, 15 years ago, uh, the Polish prime minister and the president of Poland were twins and they were like far right twins. And um, Back in the days, like 35 or 40 years ago, they actually acted in a movie together. And that's where it uh, actually originated from. Wow. The, the, two, the, the, the two killers, the, they're, they're twins. And basically, it's like this tiny little political commentary in there. It's, uh, it's kind of subtle. But as I said in the beginning, it's, it's, it's a detail that only Polish people could actually catch. So that was uh, that was the original inspiration, and then, as we went along with the screenplay, it actually started working. That maybe it's it's just uh, a little cooler, and it's going to be more fun to actually have one guy, uh, actually to have two guys as opposed to one, uh, and also to kind of play around with like this this omnipresent thing that whenever wherever the kids would go, the killer would magically show up everywhere mm -hmm. and then if it turns out that there's actually two of them and maybe it would also help a little bit with the uh, overall structure of the actual plot now in the film you explain the transformation of the two killers they're they're very deformed and as an as the audience as we're watching this we're like oh my god what happened to what we think is one killer to make him so deformed, so like, it looks like this guy went through the most radiation infected place on the world, spent a week holiday there and came back. Uh, so that brings in the story of the meteor. Um, 
Now, the way you explain it is the meteor doesn't just uh, infect human beings. It actually transforms them into an alien species. At least that's the interpretation that I got from it. They're not they're not human beings anymore. They're like an alien race. Uh, do you agree with that or do you have your own interpretation? In, yeah, in, in a way, I agree. I mean, I, I thought it would be cool to have like this little sci-fi element uh, in it, but that's also something that relates a little bit to uh, to the political context in Poland because the film that the two Polish political twins acted in 40 years ago, or maybe it was like 50 years ago, can't, can't even remember, it was actually about the two little kids who stole a piece of the moon, which was actually like a, 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 a tiny little meteor. Mm -hmm. So that was also relating this very specific moment to this very old Polish flick uh, with these two evil guys. Uh, but then, uh, but then another element, as, as I uh, as I said, was I also thought that it would be cool to have like this tiny little science fiction twist. Mm -hmm. But did it actually transform the the two guys into an alien species? I don't know if that's maybe that's a little too far because. I mean, at the end of the day, that's pretty much all we could like come up with. That's all we could afford would be uh, we actually casted this 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 actor, this huge guy who who actually like without all the prosthetics and everything, he also looked kind of monsterish. <laughs> but then with all the um, with all the prosthetics that we put on him, that's pretty much. Uh, uh, yeah, like the concept art was kind of different in the beginning. It was supposed to be like pieces of meteorite uh, mm -hmm. coming out of uh, their heads and stuff, but we 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 couldn't afford it. So th that's basically everything that we could physically make in terms of special uh, makeup effects. It looks great. Time. It actually looks really, really good. And I'm going to get back to the point as to why I thought there were different species in a second. But I want to ask you a question in between. Uh, you brought the brothers back in the second movie. You didn't have to do that because they're not the uh, the central antagonist, the killers in the second movie. So why did you bring the, the, the two brothers? Why did you keep them alive to where we thought they were dead in the first one? And why did you bring them back for the second one? Yeah, with, with, with the second film, of course, we were facing this big question. Like, should we do the same thing all over again with the big fat guys just killing a different group of teenagers in a different place and just make it bigger faster and more bloody mm -hmm. um, or just give it a shot and just turn it upside down and just do something completely different and uh, at the end of the day we chose to uh, to do the the, uh, the second more risky version but then when we decided to turn uh, our final girl into uh, in, in, into the main villain, mm -hmm. along with the with the with the young uh, police officer, then it just kind of felt like if we just totally like forget the villains from part one, it would just feel kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to uh, to put them in a the prison cell. And then at the same time, I thought it could be actually pretty funny that in the in the, in the first part they were like so huge and invincible and then in the second part they're just they're just stuck in a prison cell yeah. and they're just and they're just right there sitting and they're just stupid <laughs> i'll tell you exactly why uh for me uh i thought it might be a different species i didn't i didn't feel that way after watching part one but after part two a lot of uh of the script and attention is paid to the relationship to the final girl who's turned into a killer, and the cop, who's also turned into a monster. There's a lot of dialogue in her explaining their ways, and he's questioning her, and there's a very intimate moment shared between the two of them. So I'm like, just like any other species, they want to reproduce. So for me, that's what's like, okay, maybe they're not just infected humans with like this outer space alien micro whatever but it's transforming them into a different species uh did that at all cross your mind when especially with the intimate moment between the two of them uh you know tell us about yeah that. no uh yeah uh, 
Not really. I mean, they they also speak an an alien language that yeah. we that that we a mutant language uh, that we invented, which uh, I imagine for some people it might sound similar to Polish because it's like <laughs> two different alien languages, but it's uh, it's uh, it's it's something very different. And we had this uh, this very talented language expert that just came up with the whole language from the from the very beginning, but. Uh, yeah, the, the the reproduction stuff. I no, I I, I thought that their uh, their sex scene would just be kind of gross and fun at the same time, and that's something that I. Uh, it was shocking. It was shocking. Was it really? It was shocking in a good way. It was like, whoa! I was not ex- <laughs> I was not expecting to see alien sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I thought I thought it would be actually pretty fun. And it's like be before I actually started typing down the script uh just when the when we came up with the concept for for the whole sequel i was like yeah we just really need to have this the 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 mutant sex scene in there and it just has to be like really gross but at the same time we really wanted to make it elegant Mm -hmm. at the same time so that it's not just like some monstrous humping Mm -hmm. like something really disgusting but they're actually really in love and it's as much as 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 their their bodies are gross and uh, uh, yeah and 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 super disgusting, but they're in love and it's and it's supposed to be like really erotic and very elegant at the same time. Yeah. But yeah, I mean reactions were super mixed as to the to the entire film. So uh, yeah. <laughs> now, like I mentioned, both films are on Netflix. When and how did Netflix get involved with your project? Yeah. So with the. Uh, with part two it was a super simple story, but with part one it was uh, it was it was uh, it was a bit more complicated because, I mean, ever since I um, I, I finished film school, uh, I started to get a feature horror project off the ground in Poland because like the genre had never existed in this country, mm-hmm. and I just kept failing and failing, and I started doing documentaries for HBO. Then I did a feature film that is like a super social drama uh, genre style it's called playground Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, finally we found an investor and we just started doing nobody sleeps in the woods uh, part one as like this super low budget film that was meant to be released in polish cinemas Mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it but then the pandemics uh, hit and uh, like one week before our premiere all the cinemas were closed mm-hmm. and like the investors and everybody we were just super petrified because all of a sudden it turned out that it's just going to be a disaster after so many years of trying uh, to get any horror film off the ground and then uh, and then netflix uh, showed up and uh, they they got the film and uh, and it turned out to be a Netflix original and it premiered all over the world. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, so it was like this, this, this huge, huge, huge coincidence that actually turned out to be, uh, it, it turned out to have a happy ending for us because the the the, the viewership was uh, was very good around the world. And then straight after uh, we started working on part two. I'm sure Netflix, because of the popularity of part one, there was a no brainer for them. They're like, you know, let's do part two. And they supplied, they were the investors and all that, right? Yes. And uh, and with part two, it was a straight up Netflix original uh, commissioned by, by Netflix. And uh, uh, first we'd write a treatment. They would check the treatment and the screenplay. And it was all done under like Netflix. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, because at that point, I mean, you're bringing in a major studio and God knows the committees that has to go through. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Poland, okay? You you mentioned that Poland did not really have uh, movies in the horror genre, but Poland in general, me being in the entertainment industry as you are, uh, they are really trying to attract filmmakers from around the world. They offer great incentives, money for Americans, people all over the world to come to Poland to shoot their films. You being Polish, uh, living there, how would you describe the film industry in Poland? How would I describe it? I mean, I, I think 
Polish cinema is pretty strong and has been pretty strong for uh, for decades, but it's very strong in like festival, artistic, difficult, difficult movies. And uh, and there's there's tons of examples uh, of movies being made like from Kieślowski to uh, to 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 like Pavel Pavlikovsky, Ida and Cold War and so on and so on. And then these are brilliant films that travel around festivals around, around the world. Mm-hmm. But this is like something completely different to where my heart personally is. And in terms of horror genre itself, like for the past 50, 60 years, you had just like a couple of horror films and most of them failed. And I'm not even mentioning like Andrzej Zhuawski uh, that made some international success, but th- that's also, yeah, that's also like difficult uh, yeah. fest- festival movies. I'm not even mentioning like Roman Polanski with like Fearless Vampire Killers because that's not even a Polish film. Mm-hmm. And that's also something that, you know, came out like 50, 60 years ago. Mm-hmm. But speaking about like slasher movies and commercial horror cinema, like that has never existed in this country. And uh, it's just changed like, yeah, just like three, four years ago when Netflix came in and uh, some new doors started opening. And all of a sudden, a Polish film made in Poland gets a big viewership around the world and it and it gets released in like 195 countries mm-hmm. around the world it's 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 pretty mind blowing but it is and uh, netflix seems to be leading the charge in poland just this past year i saw a uh, uh a series called the krakow monster uh that was also yeah. filmed in poland and in fact you had one of the actors in in uh Nobody sleeps in the woods tonight. In part one, you had one of I the did? actors. Yeah, yeah. I, d- I did. I, I don't know. I, I haven't. Yeah, seen, yeah. Uh, you did. The you, monsters, I, to be honest. I don't remember his his name, but that's another. It, this was not a movie. It was a, it was a multi episode series. I don't know if they're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know. Series. I just. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Polish shot in Poland, all Polish, and again, it's on Netflix. So it seems like Netflix is really leading the charge in coming into Poland and really propping up the film industry and television industry over there. Uh, I hope so. I mean, I'm, I'm just finishing up another film for Netflix is going to premiere on, on Halloween. Nice. Uh, so, uh, so, so yeah, we, we we're working and then we're doing, uh, you know, the kind of films that I would never be able to do in this country if it wasn't for Netflix, because yeah. I mean, uh, Polish Film Institute, you know, you, you 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 can get a grant for a movie, but it's a very specific type of cinema, uh, artistic festival festival movies, and of course we have TV stations, and we do have commercial cinema that pretty much comes down to romantic comedies or like crime thrillers. Yeah, and 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 that's pretty much it, like science fiction. Uh, movies, horror movies, doesn't matter what subgenre we're talking, like that has never existed here. And yeah, things are changing with Netflix and I just, yeah, I, I, I couldn't be more happy. Let's go back to the movies again for a little bit. Uh, d- in part one, especially, you paid what I thought was tribute to some classic horror movies like uh, The Kill with the Sleeping Bag. Yeah. That was something out of Friday the 13th. Was that your inspiration for that particular kill scene? Absolutely. I mean, it's 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 like one of my favorite kill scenes in 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 all the slasher films. Yeah, and it's it's definitely an inspiration from that from from that specific movie. Uh, plus, it's 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 really cheap to do so, yes yes yes, so. yes you just stuff a sleeping bag with a sack of potatoes or whatever yes. and just bash yeah, it up yeah. against a tree exactly and it's so effective it's so brilliant and uh yeah it's uh, i mean the entire halloween franchise is uh... and then uh again the references to uh sarah connor the terminator it seemed like you really wanted to pay tribute to a lot of your favorite classic films uh would you say that's accurate as well? Yeah, absolutely. Like Friday the 13th with the sleeping bag. Uh, o- yeah, overall, pretty much like any reference that we could throw in would uh, would be 
like ticking off the list of my very favorite films. Yeah, Terminator, of course, it's uh, it's, it's it's one it's classic. Of it's a classic. Yeah. Uh, if you had to pick between in either in parts one or two, uh, what would you say was the most complicated kill that you had to shoot out of uh, both movies? The one that presented you with the biggest challenge. Hmm. I I don't know if I'm if I'm able to choose one. It's like because that's pretty bloody. The I mean these movies for our audience who hasn't watched them yet, these movies do not spare on the blood and guts. It's gory, and uh, you didn't you did not hold back anything. Uh, so they all hold a special place for you. There's not one that stands yeah. out. Yeah, pretty much like every single one of them was pretty tough. Like uh, I, I, I have a comparison because uh, first film I did was, like I mentioned, a, a, a social drama in between uh, Nobody Sleeps uh, uh, 2 and the, the, the film I'm finishing right now. I, I did another social drama and it's just like from my experience, it's, it's just so much easier to do a film that doesn't have practical effects in it. Like yeah. as long as there is some sort of a special makeup effect, some blood, any kind of practical effects on set, it just takes loads of time and it's just tough. And it doesn't matter if you're splitting the guy in half or you're just ripping the chick's face off, which is probably like my favorite kill. Uh, that but was, that but... was pretty unique. That was pretty kick ass. Yeah. Yeah, and it and it's you you just kind of like plan around it, you know, like uh, you need this moment from from this angle and this moment from that angle, and, and you, when you plan it carefully, you just uh, it's you you can still execute it in a pretty low budget way, but it's 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 time consuming and it's pretty it's it's yeah it's 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 pretty tough, especially that if you like rip the face off too quickly and it just breaks in half like you cannot do a second shot because we only had one face of yeah. course and then uh, uh i mean fortunately it worked out and then you just clean up the edges and 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 cgi so it's pretty much every single kill is sort of a mix between well it leans more towards practical effects but there is always a little cleanup in cgi now I, i'm gonna point out one kill scene which seems like it was done mainly through practical effects at the end of part one, when the police officer is split in half with the axe. Okay, yeah. clean cut. All we see are from the back of his knees down to his feet. The killer, you know, takes a whack. And then the blood and guts fall down and the legs fall in opposite directions. That seems like it was done all in practical effects. Was there a CGI involved in that? I, there was There was all the way practical effects but i think as far as i remember we had like part of a plastic tube that came out with the guts that we had to clean up uh, but that's yeah it was just like a simple rubbering yeah simple cgi cleanup but that's like yeah 99 percent practical yeah okay we're all, we're out of time but i gotta ask you before we go are there any talks plans of a part three or no uh, not or you're moment. not allowed I, to say. You know, uh, I, I, I think I'm allowed because I mean there, there, there is no talk. I okay. Mean, I, I, I do have a concept for part three, which I think it's pretty cool, and it, it shifts the genre again, and it throws everything upside down again. Uh, but it's uh, maybe in the future. I mean, right maybe. now uh, we're 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 doing something else uh, for Halloween, and then uh, we'll see we'll see in the future i think that's great that you partnered up with netflix and your movies are not limited to just poland or for everybody in the world i think that's a little bit of luck uh great directing great writing and i think it's great congratulations to getting Thank hooked so up much. with netflix congratulations on nobody sleeps in the woods tonight part one and two i encourage our audience it's available on Netflix. I know mostly everybody has Netflix. Check it out if you're looking for a fun, entertaining horror movie. Uh, Bartos uh, wrote and directed both films. Bartos, I want to thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your thoughts and experiences and making these movies. Do you have any final thoughts you want to share before we go? No, just thank you so much for inviting me over. I really appreciate it. I appreciate and, yeah. you coming on. It was a fascinating conversation. I want to thank our audience 
who's tuned in uh, both live and those who will be watching this later on. On behalf of Bartos and myself, stay safe. Stay walking, guys. Till next time. Thanks so much. <laughs>